the podcast. I'm Gray. And I'm Steve. And we're going to talk guitar. Um, I've never been awesome at math, Steve, but I think this is episode one. I believe that's correct. Yeah, awesome. Hang on. Just check with the... Yeah, that's one. One, okay. Let's go. <laughs> it might seem like an odd place to start, but it's the most recent thing we were chatting about anyway. Um, you sent me this video of this guy you follow on the YouTube. Uh, he was using these enormous, like, absurdly large rock-like guitar picks, right? And uh, they're called purple picks, is That's that right? right? Yeah, purple picks. And um, so the thing I noticed when I watched your video was that, okay, so it's an enormous, like, pure pe pebble, like you say, or, I don't know, like a wedge of cheese or something, just a huge thing. But then, of course, the, it's not like you're two mils. Like, the actual point is is wee, right? It goes, it tapers to a wee sharp point. Uh-huh, yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. So it's not quite as ridiculous. When you first described it, I thought, well, how can you just, it just sounds like you're just rubbing a big pebble on the strings. That's not going to do anything, you know? But No, the, yeah. At least it's, there is a sharp point, which makes some kind of sense. Yeah, it's more of the size of the grip, isn't it? It's, it's that. Yeah. Uh, and, and with that, movement you don't need to move that that much then as much as you would on a smaller pick so your movements is that true i would say so yeah that's what, how i felt with balls i felt i don't know it was weird i'm miming that just now and just trying to see if it i'm also doing that change. as well i don't see how it would be any different the movement you need to do to make the point go across the string surely would be the same I don't know there was something there was something i couldn't put my finger on it there was something about the your strokes that were different, it felt, something felt well, different. Well, I bet it changes quite a few things, man, because that is totally wild, right? I mean, people people have never used picks like that. No, I don't think I don't think it'll catch on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how much they are? That's the question. No, no idea. I get the feeling that these kind of, you know, these boutique specialist picks are, are not cheap. Yeah, I would imagine, I would imagine. Especially, you know, Okay, that's huge, so it might be a bit more difficult, but you lose picks, right? And you you know what I mean? This this is always the thing with when I see people buying V picks and and these kind of boutique picks, you know, you think, well I mean, yeah, I just lose I don't know how many picks I lose a year. But it's probably quite a lot, you know what I mean? And if I, I just need to grab another fender medium and I'm away, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not worry about you know, it's you know, searching the whole house for something that costs fifty dollars. Right, yeah, because you're a special pebble pick. I'm on their website now, and there's there's a there's a like a a slim Dunlop pick resting on one of their. It just doesn't look like a plectrum. <laughs> it looks more like jewellery. See, I felt I had kind of a caveman vibe, like you know, this it looks like a rock. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Place the Fred Flintstone pick. It just. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were strange, but I don't know what the thing is. I would give it a go if someone gave me, if someone handed me one, because maybe there's something about it, right, that feels super, like, oh, like that, it's just suddenly natural, you know, like this is the, this yeah. is what I've been needing. Yeah, yeah, it could be. And what's that guy called, and how come you subscribe to him, despite his funny hat? Uh, Rob Scallion, no Scallon. Scallon, okay. Rob Scallon. Um, I saw, I think it was a video he did. It was just something that was like related on YouTube, and it just said metal in weird places. And I thought, okay, <laughs> I saw you to click on that, you perv. <laughs> so it was just him playing metal in a library and stuff like that, pure, and in the shower and stuff. Oh, they don't mean like up, right? No, no, not what you're thinking. Let's see. In the shower, places. yeah. Okay. And then I just, and then I saw that he'd done um, banjo cover versions of Slayer songs, <laughs> so I clicked on them as well. Okay, <laughs> I can see now why why you've gone yeah. through. Because he doesn't play much in the video. He tries to picks up some huge like eight string or something and tries to have a yeah. go, but you can't really tell. You know, he's got he's got a video. It's just uh, it's called Zero. Not, 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 something like that, or probably the amount of strings that he's got, I don't know, that he's taking off. So he just, to start, the video starts with him taking, I think it's a, 
an eight, seven or eight string, and he's just cutting all the strings, just leaves the big, the thickest one on, and just records a, a, a track just with one note. One note, not just one string, yeah. but one note. Just, just one note, just the open note, just records a track. Well, he sounds like a wild and crazy guy. Yeah, he's a bit mad. I'm assuming though, if you've got him, that he can actually fully play also. Oh yeah, he's 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 a good player. Really. His iPhone technique wasn't too good, I'll be honest, but I like Oh, the... yeah, yeah, on that with the cat. I think it was the cat was nudging the phone. Well, you blame the cat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, check him out. Check out the Slayer covers on his banjo. <laughs> They're superb. Okay. Even if I don't have a history with Slayer, I won't know. Oh, I can't believe he's played that. Maybe, well, maybe uh, if you don't know the songs, check out the original first. You know, give it a wee blast and then... And then tune into what he's doing. You, you might know them. They're from the early Slayer, like Rain and Blood album. So, Listen, if it wasn't on Raw Power, it didn't happen. Oh, Raw Power. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there'll be very few people that ever that listen to us that will actually know. What I Raw don't Power know, is. you know. That was our lifeline. That was our it UK was. lifeline. Yeah, it's hard to imagine a world with no internet. Um, and and that was it. That was the that was the biggest thing that was uh, had any kind of form of rock music, or metal, um, if you were lucky. And it was usually on at three in the morning or something, wasn't it? Was it? Something it was super brutal. super late. Yeah. But you would tape it because it would be your only chance to get like the cool videos and the cool songs, and then you would just the yeah. real good ones. You would just wear out. You'd have seen it all so much. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Oh, uh, some some good stuff on that. Even if it wasn't your cup of tea, you'd be like, "Oh, it's rock, it's metal, yeah. you know, it's, it's on the telly." Metal is happening. I'm on British UK TV. What's going on? <laughs> right now we'll have a big we'll have a big advert for Nescafe or something. Yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do. Or um, do, 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 do. purple. Picks. That's a, oh, that's the Tony Hart song. <laughs> Is it? Did, did you ever watch that? Hard, uh, was it? What was it? What was it called? I think it was actually called. Wasn't it called like Take Take Heart? I think it was called Take Heart. Was it? Maybe not. I'm not sure. And he had a gallery tune, and that was his gallery tune. I remember the, the that must have been in space or something. The section I'm sure they of the gallery was it not called Art Attack? But that makes no sense because then it doesn't play on his name. I'm, I'm really, really, really quite... Plus, it makes light of a serious condition and medical malady. Hang on, hang on. We'll have to cut all of this out. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, that's like the tangent that Rob and the captain went into for 40-plus minutes talking about who, you know the country that has the best music or best rock bands. You know, what mm. the one, what one country probably... Based on sales, is it based on the actual amount of bands that come out of it? And <laughs> forty minutes later, the the other chap, the the, the hair, the afro, um, beer, but, ah, yeah, beer. He came in and says, and he says, "Oh, are you going to interject something?" He went, "No, you've been talking about this for forty five minutes. We should push on." <laughs> Presumably, they had guitars on their lap and that they should have been reviewing or something. Yeah, they did. It was an Ibanez one, I think. Uh, take heart. I was right. So it's take her, but H A R T, right? Because that's the sun. H A R T, yeah. <laughs> and from 1977 to 1983. Oh, I must have had something after that. That's, that. I feel like it went like through my teenage years and everything. You must have had might, some other show. Probably just repeated it. <laughs> Maybe they did. I guess it's, it's a hard thing to date, right? Yeah. See, 10 series. That's pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. That's not bad. And isn't he like the only one who hasn't been pulled into Operation U Tree so far? Operation U Tree? What's that? What country do you live in, for Christ's sake? <laughs> That's the the police operation covering. Oh, is all. that what it's called? Oh, I know what your Savile thing. Yeah. Savile, yeah, Dave Lee Travis, fucking Jim Davidson, like everybody, right, has been uh, everyone from my childhood has been arrested since I left that damn country. Yep. All massive region. Big Rolf, that was a shocker. Oh, Rolf, so nice, right? Oh, not Rolf. You'd have thought it. You know? That was sad. All so, those, yeah, uh, I feel like Tony's are basically the only one. Well. 
You just don't know what he's going up to. Never <laughs> 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 just the man with the beard. <laughs> We've both got beards, Steve. Uh, anyway, moving on. So, interestingly, you said, this is good, this is professional radio you're listening to right now. Okay, go for it. You said uh, that uh, Chappers and the captain were discussing Ibanez. I was, In that yes. video. Yes. Didn't you uh, have some Ibanez? Do you know, Graham? To discuss? You're right. Right. Uh, yes. Uh, I was uh, myself. And we'll bring, it, we'll bring the tape right back in here and mess all right. of that out. Right. <laughs> right, okay. Great. <laughs> so, yeah, I, was, um, I had my eye on a, a particular model. Um, one of which I know you've got, which is I the may LG. Have more than one. You well, you may have more than one, of course. It is you, and uh, there's a strong chance that you do. It was the RG five six five, which is the original, isn't it? That's the one you have. It is, and that's back in the what the early nineties. Early nineties, probably like ninety two, something like that. Ninety one, ninety two, kind of area, I believe. Yeah. And, and what we're specifically talking about here is humbucker, bridge, single, neck, configuration. With maple nothing frame. in between, which looks With cool nothing as in shit. between. Yeah, no scratch plate. Just really, really does look nice and clean. Maple, maple neck, obviously, uh, but maple fretboard specifically. Um, I don't know if the... See, that's a good quick thing. I don't. Did the 565 have a reverse headstock? It did. Ah, okay. So, in keeping with that, they brought out, and I might, I'll probably get all my dates wrong here, but I think it was about 2000. They brought uh, the RG465. There's usually a, 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 a letter missing between the, the RG and the 465, just depicting colour. So I guess the blue one would be an RGB. Oh, I see. Four six five, and the red one is is an R. Uh, four six five. Made in Indonesia. You okay. say two thousand? I. Hmm. This isn't recent. Well, maybe maybe two thousand ten. That I mean, that makes more sense. Maybe two thousand and ten. Like these re-releases have been more recent for them. Yeah. Than, than like yeah. This is why I'm getting mixed up because there's another. Oh okay. <laughs> So here's the weird thing, right? So the there's two guitars I'm specifically going to talk about. They're both made in Indonesia, so we could go follow at that if we want. Um, they both have bass or basswood bodies, depending on what you want to call it. But basically, they're, they're identical uh, in terms of all the woods. The, the pickups are DiMarzio, uh, Air Norton at the neck, and... Something else at the bridge. Something else. I love those. Oh, what's it called? Activator? No, it's something. I can't remember. Um, but uh, they, it's really down to, I think, the neck width, Wizard 2 and Wizard 3. Are these both are, current? Like, they're both available current guitars? No. This is the sad part. They're, they're, they're probably all going to be used. Now, there's one on uh, eBay at the moment. It's the... Uh, it's the first one I've mentioned, the 465. The trouble with the 465 really comes down to the Ibanez Edge 3 tremolo, which gets, I mean, if you look into it, it really gets slated hard on the internet. They've just finally gone too cheap, have they, with these overseas yes. ones? Yeah, this is really, really poor. The other one, which is an RG3XXV, we know what that stands for. It's the 25th anniversary edition of that guitar. And it has the Edge Zero Two tremolo, and I think that's the one that probably have the Wizard Three neck, so even even slimmer, I would imagine. Um, and uh, and that's the one because I didn't know much about it. It was just pure, um, just purely looking constantly at the four six five, just looking at uh, deals, looking at where I could get it, and then it was something just related that caught my eye. Um, I think it was probably a forum or something like that. And uh, yeah, that's when I uncovered the RG3 XXV with the, the better tremolo, which I, I was surprised that they'd even brought that out. And I think they were brought it out within about two or three years of each other. So I think I think my dates are coming to me. Yes, I think 
the the the, 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 the poor yes the poor tremolo version the 465 was i think 2010 and i think the 25th anniversary was perhaps only just two two years ago that it was released but limited limited numbers uh the 465 we're still the, talking both indonesian right both yeah both indonesian um the not premium either and they're not they don't have that tag on them they're just made in indonesia yeah <laughs> um uh so yeah i think i think the 465 the lesser of the two in terms of the tremolo was a uk thing maybe uk and europe i don't think the states got it i don't think you guys got it at all right that makes me feel slightly better for being completely unaware of it yeah uh however the three xxv i'm not sure about its um its supply if it was worldwide or or just maybe i think it hit the states uh, and you think yeah. it's basically the same except for it's got a proper tremolo it's got a proper tremolo yeah in fact it's a highly thought of tremolo the edge zero two okay but of course you'll also read people saying just buy an rg565 with the edge or low pro edge tremolo some of the best you know some people consider it the best tremolo ever made that's what i would say <laughs> would you know it is, though, because every time, right, I'll tell people buy an older, used, real Japanese Ibanez than a modern one made somewhere funny. Yep. Uh, I have been looking for all three and uh, not turning much uh, much up. Uh, eBay has one. It's, the, it's the, the one I don't want, obviously. It's the cheaper right. of the three. Um, it's a shop that's selling it. Um, uh, the thing is, I would imagine you could, uh, dimension-wise, I, I haven't looked into it, but I wonder if the tremolos, yeah, can you be know, a standard thing. Yeah, just rip it out, stick a new one in, or, you know, whatever. And you've got it. Whether you would, I, I don't know about, I don't know about build quality, you know, if they're both probably coming from the same factory in Indonesia, I would imagine they both play and, and feel the same. Um, albeit the the necks are probably a few millimeter thicker here or there. I just feel if you're going to have one of these for any kind of length of time, why not find the what I would call the real thing? You know, just like those yeah. Fujigen produced, you know, the Japanese built Ibanez of the of the eighties and nineties, which were marvelous, and they're not even expensive. You know, they're getting a little more expensive, but they're not they're not mental yet. No, I tell you what, um, I've played, and I don't think you have, uh, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, any of the, the, the current sort of batch of Ibanez guitars, and I don't mean prestige, I mean premium and, and down. I've played quite a few of them, just, just in the shops. I'm, I wasn't consciously thinking of buying an Ibanez like I am just now, but, um, and I, I remember playing a few premium models and I definitely thought that these aren't the same. They don't feel... And they had a thousand... One of them had a thousand pounds price tag on it. And I was like, oh, I don't know, you know. This goes back uh, to what we were saying last night, right? It, I it feel totally like does. <laughs> you shouldn't... Even if a thousand pounds doesn't get you all that much these days... It still doesn't mean you should spend that and just be happy that you, you know, like, ah, oh, it's all right, you know, a thousand pounds, yeah. it's all right. It's all right. I know. I think, yeah, I think I'm maybe going to backtrack on what we were talking about last night, albeit it was amplifiers, but um, I think for a guitar at a thousand pounds, a thousand pounds, you know, you're thinking, <laughs> the it should be a bloody the queen's <laughs> poor woman slaving down there. Um, it should be good. It should be good, you know. Well, think um, of what you could get used, right? You could get some incredible, like, American-made, Japanese-made, some really beautiful, like, lifelong instrument for a thousand goddamn pounds. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I, I, I've i owned two Ibanez guitars. Um, one was the Floral Gem um, from way back. Uh, it was a good guitar. I just didn't get on with it. That, but you yours know. was the reissue of that, wasn't it? 
I think it was, yeah. Which was made I sort of early two thousands or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. It was so yeah. nice. It really was. I wish. I wish they kept it. Actually, I wish you'd kept it. You're an idiot. <laughs> There you are, it's out there. <laughs> uh, that was one of those guitars, and, and and we've probably all owned one where you just open the case and go, <gasps> yeah. And there's that moment, you know, you just open the case. And I, bizarrely, my other Ibanez had the exact same effect as well, and that was the Paul Gilbert, the PGM 301. I always forget the digits of yours, but 301, that's, so that's fixed bridge. Fixed bridge, go to fixed bridge, just... Great hardware, go to um, tuners. Um, Not too with... twiddly of a neck, right? No, it was it was a little bit more meat on it than than your usual wizard nonsense. Um, yeah. Uh, you know uh, the Graham Cracker still, snake. St- st- still pretty thin, given the the artist that it's you know tagged with. Um, he could play probably a tree and be happy, quite comfortable. Um, well, that fireman you, thing, which kind of does, yeah, <laughs> it kind of does. Now I picked one of them up recently off the off the store wall, and it's it's a big neck. Focus. Uh, so, and of course, I've sold that as well. But of course, the the, the three hundred one being a, a prestige model, um, the build quality, I couldn't fault that guitar. That guitar's a fantastic guitar. Um, sold by me because uh, tonally. I was kind of struggling with it at the time with the amp that I had being a Laney GH50. Um, just everything, everything was dead bright, right? Everything I stuck in it with that guitar was just, yeah, I struggled so hard to to, to customise it to my own liking. Um, but here's the thing. Price-wise, like you're saying, uh, the new batch of 2015 Prestige guitars the modern tremolos there, the the zero one, with all the gubbins at the back. You don't need to take the plate off to to lock it, move it. Um, uh, are retailing it like under a thousand? That's new, and that's that's not bad. I didn't know that Ibanez had become reasonable again because it seemed like when when they divorced the kind of two sides of the brand, right, and had the all the endo stuff, and then the kept the prestige you know as if they were trying to make it even uh more lofty than it was before right these are even more special when it's actually just what i used to do normally every day right was just build cool japanese guitars so because i've been seeing stuff like every time a musician's friend catalog or something comes around and i see like how how much say like the white gem the seven vwh that i have right that's, yep. it's just keeps rocketing us. I don't even know what they want for it these days, but it's absolutely mental money. Yeah, it really is. Uh, it's crazy money. And it, it must be three seven or something in dollars, must be three thousand seven hundred or something like that. It's so so high. And um, when yeah. nothing's really changed, right? It's still just the same generally as it was. It's it's a funny yeah. They still, and I definitely feel that happened when when the premium models came out. That's exactly how I, I think we both felt the same. We we're like, "What are you doing, really?" Yeah, you're they're trying to out, make their normal daily to... stuff suddenly seem extremely special and kind of uh, high end, right? Because we all knew a Japanese-made guitar from Ibanez was was the shit, and suddenly they're giving us Indonesian stuff, retagging it. And putting it at a price point that you're thinking, wait a minute, that we, yeah, we were yeah. just like it wasn't long ago that, that we for... used to get the real thing for that. What's going exactly, on? yeah. Now, what I will say is, you, you can still, if you want, <laughs> buy a prestige RG for nearly two thousand pounds. That's that. Uh, that's still there. Don't ask me what the difference is between that and these new ones that are still prestige but are under a thousand pounds. In fact, I'm looking at one of them right now, and it's nine hundred and twenty-five pounds. And what are we talking is still—is it basically a five fifty? What, what do you get? It, it's it's called an RG six five five. It looks yep, scratch plate like a five fifty. Humburger single humbucker. Pretty much, yeah. I would say that's a that's a five fifty. And if the carnation. have they reawakened the maple fretboard yet, or is it still a thing of the Unf- past? 
unfortunately, yeah, it's still Rosewood. <laughs> okay. With, with the white dot in late. It still looks smart, I've got to say, but oh, sure. I would definitely have craved uh, the maple board more than that. Um, Air Norton pickup, Tone Zone in the bridge. Good, good pickups, yeah. I mean, that's, it still has a great price. Um, they must be doing something, though, right? There's got to be something funny about it. There always is. Um, uh, in what way? <laughs> well, so Gibson <laughs> does this, right? They, people think that Gibson's a very expensive sort of premium brand, right? They, their, their prices are... They just... Every year they go further and further out of control. But they have like a cheaper little imprint label that's you you look at and first of all you think what it's like a new us gibson for that much but it's when you get up close you realize that it has like a you know they save a lot on the finishes on on these kind of budget end gibsons right because uh -huh. that's yeah. what takes the all you know the hours right for people to carefully finish you know with nitro as well right because it's gibson which is dead um, you know, uh, fragile and gentle and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so they seem to save money on like that, you know, on the finishing. And it'll, you'll see the grain of the wood through it because they haven't used grain filler and they just skipped steps, you know, to to save man hours, which means money, you know. And yeah. probably hardware as well, I'm assuming, you know, that this, this stuff is probably made out of cheese. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> you know, I've got a studio and... Um... Uh, I've not spent too much time with standards and anything above that class of, of Gibson. Um, playing my, my studio, Studio Deluxe, sorry, is for its full title because it's, it does have the maple cap. Um, it's, um, it's definitely a, a, I think I definitely feel that it's, it could be better maybe, you know, it's like the, the, maybe the finishing on, so you um, think I'm having to go to studios? I'm so not. That's not where I'm at with this at all. Oh, you're not. It's not. It's not. Oh no, 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 no. It's not, it's not like that. Basically, you, the studio you just is a, is a standard without the binding, right? There's not that much difference, right? Well, that's how they like to paint it. Are you talking general quality control? No, I'm talking about they have specifically cheaper ones. I'm talking about stuff that's like six hundred dollars brand new. Like they have Les Paul Juniors. There, you can tell they don't have a curved top. They have. They don't tend to have a cap, even they're the really simple, basic looking guitars with with very simple, quick finishes on them as well. No, there's a real there's a real budget and stuff. I know you've got no, inferiority I, complex about your studio, but you're too rough on it. No, I have not. No, I, I like the guitar. I, I no, I, I really it's don't. Matter of record. <laughs> I know the guitars you're talking about because that's what I was initially looking at. That's was, what I'm talking about. Those when ones, I was, they're, yeah, they're surprisingly cheap. They were five hundred pounds, five to six hundred pounds here, right? Uh, and they had yeah, total strip down, just brown, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, <laughs> almost matte brown, right? In this, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. I know the ones you were talking. You're, you're, I'd never ever played one. Um, it was only when I saw this my studio, the, the deluxe one with the maple top. Um, that I thought, oh, that's that's nicer. Still no binding, like you say. It's still the stripped down version. Um, I, I think they used to use a workman's type. Um, I'm sure that was a phrase they used. I think to try and get you to, oh, right. So it's, you know, it's, I'm a workman. <laughs> oh, I see. Like it's a more know, honest, I'm a blue collar guy. Working I, class I can, instrument. Yeah, yeah, I can I can go and get that. Um, but their prices are bonkers. You know, their their prices are crazy. Um, but we're going off the Ibanez topic a little bit. I we just want to just quickly. Um, We've got editing. We can do anything. And I think that's really what we're talking about in general. As soon as I, this whole topic of the RG 565s versus Indonesian made RG3 XXV, you know, it's just chop around, look at how much money you're going to be paying, what you're getting for your cash. I mean, uh, the woods are the same. Pickups are not the same. If you buy the older one, of course, I don't know what that came with. Any ideas? Oh, you're talking about the original 565 from back yeah. in the 90s. Probably DiMarzio, so yeah. Well, it would, be, it would have been those DiMarzio made or DiMarzio designed IBZ pickups, right? That's IBZ's. from that era. Yep. 
Yeah. Um, and I'll be honest, even the amount of Ibanez I've had and the fan and all that, that I was, the, the IB sets were never, they're never great. You know, they're just, they're just going to get by pickups. I've pretty much always planned on, on swapping them out if I got a guitar that had them, you know. Yeah. They were a bit like bland is all, right? There's never, you're never like, oh, that's a horrible noise, but they were just, they were always a bit bland. Well, I think, I think that's enough on um, 80s uh, hair metal guitars. Right. They've also got the Iron Label um, series of guitar, which I think appeals to more the seven string guys, eight string guys. It sounds tough, so I'm guessing it's yeah. just that bit more metal. Yeah. And do they have Iron Labels, Steve? At this store that I'm looking at? No, like the actual guitars, do they have Iron Labels on them? <laughs> I don't believe so. <laughs> well, that's a chip, isn't it, for a start? It is, really. I would take it straight back. What the hell is this? Not even metal coloured plastic? No. It's hard to tell where these things are made as well. Yeah, the amount of time I've spent I'm gonna when I'm researching a guitar that I want and I'm, you know, you, when like that, when they're a little bit vague about it and I'm, I'm trying to find pictures of the back of the headstock and stuff to see, like, <laughs> where does it say this is made? I bet it's somewhere a little bit funny. Yeah, I know. I found one. It is a seven string. It doesn't mention where it's made. It does have good parts. Goto, um, uh, EMG pickups. You uh, said good parts? Apart from the EMG pickup, ebony fretboard. Um, uh, the body is ash wing, so it's a neck through. Walnut, uh, maple walnut neck. Uh, Gibraltar standard two stroke seven bridge. It's a fixed bridge. Everybody's made, I think. That's their own. Yeah, didn't that one bridge. we wanted back in the day have a Gibraltar? That's correct. They are, oh gosh, the RGA. RGA 121, right? 2 1. That's it. Yeah, that was nice. I played one of them. Yeah, yeah. me too. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was uh, always uh, a bit interesting. Uh, and what was that? Was that was that a prestige guitar? Yeah. That was really cheap. <laughs> it was cheap. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! So a different that was mahogany era. body, wasn't it? Mahogany. Yeah, and mahogany with a maple cap, right? It's totally like a sort of transitional ibanez yeah. for people like us who got older and got out of the the sort of thinner sounding basswood ones and sort of start to head towards. Wait a minute, mahogany sounds really good. Yeah, but yeah. you can still have an ibanez that that's a cool shape and that plays really easy. Yeah, that was a cool one. I still might eventually pick one of those up, man. It's a it's a nice guitar. It was nice, yeah. Right, so we imagine that uh, something just happened, like it went, right, and then there's, there's, been, a, <laughs> there's been a break. Really? <laughs> I'll just use that. I'll use that. <laughs> well, like Matt Lee's at the end. <laughs> right, oh, yeah. we, we could just go, <laughs> if we could harmonise it, that would be amazing. I'm not that good. So you recently sent me a track couple different versions but um yeah this is why i kind of wanted to introduce it because i think i want to describe the way that i heard it first of all um because people if we even manage to do one more of these things right people are going to realize that you're kind of a shreddy player right yeah yeah those yeah you're guilty right Ah, uh-huh. that's charged totally um a lot of technique horrible person but just amazing on the instrument yeah. Yeah, pretty much got that's it in a nutshell. So you send me this track and first of all what makes me pay attention is it starts kind of it's like slow and bluesy, right? Which is a, already quite a departure, let's be honest. <laughs> you could say. Right, I mean it is. Even if you sometimes play like that on your own, the stuff you pass out right has just blistering shred all over it, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. So it's got this nice subtle thing, it's got slow, clean arpeggios in the background and this nice bluesy lead. And then you just get hold of this damn note, and you know I like this better, you just get hold of it and just <laughs> throttle the bastard just like with this huge vibrato. And it's so passionate and it just builds and builds and builds and everything gets louder and the rhythm guitars come up. And then just, there's so just this huge cascade of shred. And, and of course it has to come at some point, right, in a, in a Steve Wonsky yeah. track. <laughs> but it's the way that it builds to it with such passion and then just like, there's just this 
I don't know, just this release of, of Shred, you know? And it's, for me, that's just, it's such a relevant way to use it, you know, to not just be patterns and, you know, scales and exercises that are kind of put into a solo, but to use it in that way that's, it's actually emotional, it's like it really means something, it just, it's just sounded so urgent and just, you know, it's exactly the right time to use that kind of technique you. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was awesome. And uh, let's play it now. Yeah. section yeah leading up to the part where that shred part happens i i i doubted i thought does, does it need that is that should that be should that happen that massive shred harmonized section is it just an over is it just too much you thought this i thought this um <laughs> uh i, I know it's just a strange one could be i think it's because i i that the section leading up to that and, and I'm very pleased that you felt the same way. Um, and I knew the riff coming in was good. I, I really liked the build up and I knew the riff was good. And that was my worry, was that the shred part would have taken something away from all that. Um, but of course I did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help yourself, everybody knows. And, uh, and, it, and, it, and it did work out, yeah, I think it did. I, I've listened back to it a few times and I've thought, yeah, I can't imagine it not doing that now. It just, it's just, yeah, it seems right. It just, yeah, it seems, it seems really fitting that it should be right, right there. Um, and then obviously leading off into an actual, uh, lead line, you know, guitar solo. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the choice to finish it as well. I finished that section again with it. 
Um, when you say it, you mean the huge rip roaring big cascade it, of shred or something? Yes, yes. Um, I, I doubted that as well. I thought, should, should I do that? Is, that? is that a weird thing to do? You know, should the solo just end on a note and that's the guitar solo done? And then when I put it in, I thought, yeah, yeah, it's the end of that section. It's the start and it's the end. So it's like a bookend. It's, it's exactly, just, it's, exactly what I was about to say, yeah. Encapsulates yeah. it all. Yep. And I was, uh, I was well chuffed. So, and now you're just, you've got basically the performances, right? You're just working on mixing it to get it final? Mixing it, get it final. Um, and my hope is to make a little video for YouTube. Oh, that's uh, right. I forgot this was the original aim. I got so caught up in the whole thing of... I know. I, yeah, I did too. I haven't, not one camera has rolled. <laughs> it's just right. working on the track and then enjoying the track and, 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 and making sure that because you're going to put it out there, you know, to the YouTube public, yeah, uh, you Bastards. don't, you don't, <laughs> you don't want to make, uh, yeah, you're, you're conscious. It's your thing, you know. You're you're putting yourself out there, so you you don't want to you want to do the best job you can. And so I'm still working on little bits. I've erased so much. I've had the bluesy intro section and a, a kind of bluesier outro section, um, and they've all been erased. The, the the vibrato no will always remain. That will always end on that leading in. It has to, you know. Yeah, that big build up. It's... That build up. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's where I'm at just okay, now. Okay, magic. Because yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lovely track. Good there job. You. What's it called at the moment? Oh, uh, it does not have a working title yeah, I, at I all. I feel like when you've been sending it to me, actually, it's been called something like YouTube track or something. Yeah, YouTube track. So <laughs> some oh, so emotional. I'm so evocative. I'm a passionate guy. I can just picture it. It's YouTube and it's it's got this track on it. Right, wicked. Okay. Then imagine another thing that goes. That's right. Someone gave me a metal pick to try. Uh, Carol sent me one at Christmas, made out of a like a nickel or a quarter or something like. Oh really? Like actually out of one? Wow. Yeah. Like, but I mean, the company has obviously taken them and they've done the, they've cut it and done the sharpening and all that, and then replated it. But you can tell that it was originally a coin. I know that um, Billy Gibbons uses uh -huh. some kind of special, I don't know, like a buffalo nickel or something. There's a special coin that he uses for that tone of his. And of okay. course, Brian May, right? He's the other one I always think of. Uses a, he uses, at least he uses a sixpence, right? Just, yeah, I think he still does. Still does right for his his yeah. thing. It's weird he doesn't have this. I think Billy Gibbons has quite. You can imagine his tone right being played he's, with a metal yeah. pick, right? He's got quite a, a tone. Yeah, he does have a marvelous tone, and particularly has quite a squeaky kind of little attack to it, right? You know that yeah. you can imagine that metal. Don't don't think of that with Brian May so much, but also I think Brian's got. A, I think Brian had a great tone, especially for the time. Oh man, I know. Um, when you when you hear like like. Bohemian Rhapsody in the album that that came from, uh, A Day of the Races. Um, no, A Night of the Opera. Uh, that was 70, I think it was recorded 73, 74, released in 75. But you're like, wow, well, that's just a, I mean, every, there was guys out there, set when we're doing their thing, Les Pauls, Danny Marshalls, that sort of stuff. But his, obviously, was Fox AC30, but oh, man. It's just amazing. Yeah, it has some, like, real body to his lead tone and stuff. That, like, Zeppelin didn't have that stuff. There was still, like, dirty no. little fuzzy guitars. Dirty fuzzy guitars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Steve Vai loved to say, he always said, Brian May, just, I think, um, I know Steve, when he said it, when he talked about Brian May in such a positive light, you know, you kind of think, Really, you going to buy me? Then, then I listen to Brian May and I think about Brian May and I think, well, yeah, I can. I, I Brian did a lot of stuff. Steve does a lot of slide and stuff, and, and Brian did a lot of that as well. It's quite inventive, um, a little bit more inventive, I think, than the guys around. Like, right, you again. don't mean slide, do you? Not slide, no sliding, just sliding to one note. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, I just uh. Well, plus, you know, he has, like, really great structured solos, right, and melodic-type yeah, yeah, playing, yeah. right? That's yeah. going to affect all sorts of people, even if you That's, can't immediately yeah. hear the aura, you don't sound like Brian May or Queen. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Brian May, really. I've, 
it's such an admirer of what he did. But I've listened to loads of stuff as well. But that's my favourite album, The Night of the Opera. It just happens to have one of the biggest <laughs> tracks in the history of music, <laughs> let alone rock music, yeah. on it. Because the rest of the album's equally, uh, to me, amazing. And I, I urge you to, to sit down and give it a listen because it's got amazing piano as well from, from Freddie. So that's a wrap for this episode. I've been Steve. You've been Graham. I have. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. If more than 12 people listen to this one. Yeah. If more than 12 people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> and uh, we'll start to cover the Guthrie Govan Charvel, the EVH3. Yeah, there's the, there's the Troy Grady stuff that I want to oh, get into. Yep. Aye, aye, Troy, yep. Because of the obsession problem that I have. And uh, there's tons of speaker stuff to do. We didn't do any speaker stuff, and I'm constantly screwing around with speakers. Yeah, that um, could be a whole show in itself, man. Yeah, I don't know. Well, it's just there's always so probably. much of this stuff we're chatting to each other about. There's going to be there's gonna be a backlog of shiz to put in. I think that's, uh, I think that's us. I think that's finished. Bye, everyone. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> I think I did a whole other joke to the show. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> like one guy eating his breakfast. <laughs> his shots. He's like 45 in a straight yeah. vest. And you're Bye, dripping. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're saying if there was two or three plays, if you saw that it had been played two or three times, you would still make another one. Yeah. <laughs> you still would. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that oh, might. Okay. <laughs> Unless there were it was two or three comments that were just absolutely slaying the fuck out of us. Yeah, what wow. if it was like three plays and three thumbs down? Then yeah. would, you make, would you still make another one? Yes. You still would. This is probably very healthy for me to have someone so optimistic because uh, <laughs> that's my partner. So I guess that. if there's bad stuff as well, we can just keep putting them out but just turn comments off and just be like, la, la, la. Yeah. We know yeah. you hate us, but for some reason we just want to piss this onto the internet. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs>